Okay, we're going to start by defining a few probability terms. And uh, probability is the mathematics about things that are not certain. It has an interesting history we're going to get to a little bit later. But let's start off with just a few definitions we need. First off is outcome. An outcome is the simplest thing that can happen. And an event is a set of outcomes that share some property of interest. So let's demonstrate a very simple outcome. I've got a little spinner here. You can see that if I spin it, and assuming there's nothing weird about this, it could equally likely stop on any one of these numbers. For example, it stopped on a four. That's an outcome. <laughs> okay, look at that. What are the odds? Well, we'll be able to figure the probability and odds of that out in a minute. Of course, we don't know for sure whether this is a fair spinner because we haven't had a chance to study it. This time we got a two. This has six different outcomes, and they might be equally likely, unless there's something odd about this spinner. It's probably equally likely due to the area to stop on any one of these numbers. Now an event is a little bit uh, more complex than that. It's a set of outcomes that share a property of interest. Let's say I'm interested in getting a number five or greater. Okay, well there are two outcomes that would meet that event and I got one right there, five. Try the other direction. I'm just lucky at rolling doubles today. Good thing I'm on my way to Vegas next week. Anyhow, the event, a number greater than five, be five or six. You could have other events like even numbers, in which case it would be two, four, and six. And if the outcomes are equally likely, it becomes very easy to calculate probabilities of events. We can have some other things going on. Perhaps we're flipping three coins. So we'll give that an experiment here. So there we flip three coins. And I got two heads and a tail. And well, how many different possible outcomes are there? Well, each of the coins has two sides. And so 2 times 2 times 2, there would be 8 possible outcomes. Now maybe an event might be that I want to get 2 heads or better in, one, in a flipping of the 3 coins. So that would of course include a number of our possible outcomes. And we'll develop a tree to analyze that here in a minute. So well, there's 2 heads, although I had to help the penny back onto the viewing area. You can also roll some die if you guys like die. We can play Yahtzee in here. Okay, so we've got different things going on. Of course a die has 6 sides that are equally likely. A lot of times we're rolling a couple of them at a time, and we're adding the points together. So an outcome would be a 7. What is the probability I get a 7 as a sum when I roll two die? We're going to analyze that here in a minute as well. Okay, one of the things we need to be aware of is the basic law of probability. And this applies when we've come up with a framework to think of our problem where we have equally likely outcomes. I've mentioned that before. This is important. We need to set it up where we can have equally likely outcomes. Then in Basic way we can calculate the probability of an event E. We often den denote an event with a capital letter like E, since event starts with that, or sometimes A and B. We count the outcomes of E, so all the ways we could possibly get the result we want, E, over the total possible things that can happen. If we have equally likely outcomes, this will be the probability of E. Now some notes about probability answers. All probabilities are in between 0 and 1. And sometimes we do it in percent, but of course that would be 100% and 0%. So any event, no matter what it is, probably it'll rain today in Arizona, has to be between 0 and 1. Probability your friend will have four children and they're all girls, also in between 0 and 1. Okay, probability of 0, of course, means something's impossible. Now, this is impossible as in really impossible. You may recall a scene in Pirates of the Caribbean where the one pirate says, Captain Jack Sparrow, you're still alive? That's impossible. And Jack Sparrow responds, actually, that would be improbable. So it's a funny probabilistic joke. He's saying, well, the probability is low, but it couldn't actually be zero if I'm still alive. Of course, a probability of one means it's certain, it's already happened, it's, it absolutely has to happen. Okay, now this is an important rule that enables us to solve some probabilities that we're going to get to soon. The probability of an event E happening, whatever it is, plus the probability that it doesn't happen, has to equal 1 if we add them together. <clears throat> probability, people usually write a bar over the E, so I'm putting that in here so we're aware of it. E bar is the same as not E. And if we can solve this for either one of them, when we're typically going to use this is when we have some event of interest that's kind of hard to solve for, but the opposite, not E, would be kind of easy. So then we'll, we'll find the probability of not E and we'll subtract that from 1. If I move this to the other side, I'll get the probability of the event I'm wanting to find. So many times, there will be an easier way to find the probability of an opposite than the one we're trying and we have directly. And another term of importance to us, independent events. Events are independent if they do not influence each other. So flipping two coins. 
All right, let's say I flip two coins and I'll do it kind of slowly. That wasn't a very good flip. There you go, there's a tail. Do you think that changes the probability of my next coin? Is it more likely to be heads or tails based on this coin? Of course not. This coin is not communicating with this one. There's, I get a tail anyway. You know, that's just me. I'm a lucky guy. I always roll tails. But of course they're not communicating. They don't have any influence on each other. So they're clearly independent events. And if A and B are independent, then the probability of both A and B happening is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So for the one we just did, two tails, probability of getting tails twice with two coins would be one half times one half. The independent probabilities multiplied together or one fourth. So it's 25% chance or 0.25 probability that I would get the two, two tails that I just flipped. Okay, mutually exclusive means what it sounds like. They exclude each other. If they exclude each other, they cannot happen at the same time. This means the probability of A and B happening together is zero. It is impossible for them to happen together. And another term we're going to need to be aware of, and this is misused a lot in the fallacy of gambling, is the law of large numbers. Over a large number of trials, observed probability will approach theoretical probability. That means for my flipping coins, where I already had two tails, if I do this all day, so now I have three out of four. Okay, now I have, five, let's see, five, five out of six. So I'm, I've got off to a real bad start. Right now I have five out of six tails. So it's not looking like the 50-50. We know what has to be a half. We know that fairly certainly from our understanding of mathematics. If I do it a thousand times, this probability, which is right now way off from half, will begin to approach this. It will begin to approach one half over lots of trials. Has to. Has no choice. However, it has no prediction on the next one. So you'll get people that will misuse the law of large numbers. They'll say this next flip of the coin is probably going to be heads. Right? Because I need to make up for all those tails I've already thrown. It doesn't work that way. What's passed is completely forgotten. This coin doesn't remember. It doesn't have a brain. It doesn't have any memory chip whatsoever. So it doesn't know what happened. Next flip is independent. Now my flipping onto a piece of paper from short altitude may not be the best, but you get the notion. So in the large number of trials, the five that were already were off, we had you know a couple more than we would have expected tails early on will begin to have less influence over thousands of flips. As long as that coin is fair, the probability will begin to approach 0.5.